through 2018. We're going to start 2019 hitting it hard. Making videos for you guys. You're going to follow us along in our journey of DIY and how-to projects. We're going to start a cooking series, so stay tuned for that. And we're going to get more animals. So to start out the new year, we're going to build myself a DIY rustic door for my bedroom for under $50. So first things first, measure twice, cut once. So we're going to measure. The width is 28. And it looks like it is 82 and a half inches tall. So let's get to cutting. So a tip to make sure you get good straight boards is to look down it, hold it down straight, and you wanna look straight down, and then hold it sideways and look straight down. Make sure it's not bowed or crooked or anything like that, and you'll get the best wood. What's up, buddy? Now that we checked the boards and made sure they were straight, we got the best eight, because we're gonna use eight of them wide, and some of them have defects like this, or the wood's not the best, but we're going for a very rustic look. So this is actually perfect for what we're going for. And also whenever you measure your boards, measure twice, cut once, but make sure whenever you put your mark, you know which side you're cutting on. Uh, sometimes people put like a little X or something so you know cut on that side because if you're cutting right on the line you're going to be off of your measurement so make sure your blade you know ends up on this side of the line see how it lines up right there on the edge of the line that's what you're going to do now that we've cut this one board how we need it the length we need eight more of these for ours since it's 28 almost 28 inches wide that we need. So we need eight boards and that's what we're gonna cut right now. So we brought the eight boards in, we laid them next to each other. We wanted to make sure they fit very well in here. And as you could tell, there's a little bit of gap on each side, which we knew about. We just didn't know exactly how much we need. So we're gonna have to cut three eighths of an inch on each side to add to it which works perfect because we're gonna put trim on it and that way it'll show these creases and not cover it. So now with this piece on there on both sides, it fills in the gap a little bit better here and over here. Okay, so now that we got the boards where we want them, we are now gluing just to get it some extra support and hold the boards together. I think most people don't realize how strong wood glue is. Normally, when you glue something and you break it, it's gonna break at a new joint and not where the glue was. And then just go back, kind of spread it out real quick. Make sure, that way, whenever you're putting the board on, it's not gonna drip down. With the pipe clamp, you're gonna get the best product in the end because you can squeeze all the gaps together. So now that you got it all, um, where you want it, you want to go back and make sure the edge is good. Just make sure the edge is all together. This is going to make sure you get the good straight line. And then squeeze your clamp together. Check it one more time. It's nice and smooth. Now you're going to tighten this just a little bit. Not over the top because if you do too much, it'll start to buckle. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, just make sure you kind of hold it flat. Um, if it's not holding flat, a tip you could do is just put a long board down and kind of put some weight on it as you're doing it and it'll keep it down. So I'm gonna tighten this just a little bit. You're gonna see these gaps start to close, which is exactly what you want. So the, the wood glue will dry where it needs to be. And then of course, check, make sure that line, the line's good. It means it all lined up pretty well. And we have an extra pipe clamp, so the best thing you can do is put it on top. That way when you clamp it together, it's holding it down. The other side's holding it from the other side, and you're still clamping the middle to make sure there's no gaps in the middle of the door. 
Now that you got the clamps on there, the best thing you can do, let the glue dry. Give it like 30 minutes to an hour, a little longer if you have the time. Um, we're not that patient. And so if you give it about 20, 30 minutes to dry, it's gonna hold it together a lot better. Now that we let it dry for about 30 minutes, we're gonna come in and we're gonna measure. We're gonna start to frame out the door. Okay, so you, what we're gonna do for ours is we wanna frame it off from the very bottom the whole thing. We're not going to cut um, 45s or anything like that and frame it off. We're just going to do nice and rustic. And so we're going to measure this, which is 27 and 3 fourths. So we need a board 27 and 3 fourths on both sides. So we're going to cut two. are going to get this piece that we just cut and it's gonna be the bottom of the frame and so we are going to glue and screw it all down and like I said earlier glue is a lot stronger than you think so don't be scared so now it's time to screw down the trim So a tip is with sometimes when you use cheap wood or really expensive wood, you don't want to split it with a screw. So if you pre-drill a hole, just through the top board, then you put the screw through it it's not gonna crack the board. So now we're gonna measure to see how long we need this trim to be. And that is 74 and 3 fourths. Now we're adding the side trim, we got the piece cut. I put some glue on there. Now we're gonna throw this on there. And we're just gonna line up the edges and then screw them in. Come down here, make sure we get it all lined up. Now, as you can tell, the boards we picked that were kind of messed up, this is why we did it. That way, it looks really rustic. We didn't have to do anything to it. And then, since we added that trim on the outside, you can now see the line coming down instead of it being right on top. Instead of this being right on top of it, now you can see the actual line. And to me, it looks a little bit cleaner that way. So now we're gonna measure for the cross beam. It's gonna hold everything in place. We're gonna measure it out. Looks like it's 20 and seven eighths. It's gonna help hold all the boards together. So we've measured halfway. Now it's time to screw the board down. Trying to get the wood to pull up here. Now we're gonna put the cross beam in here to make it look more like a farm door. And so instead of doing math, we hate doing math, if you just mark the board or cut, put the edge right here, and then you know you're gonna go straight across. So it's gonna be from the edge and then look over the top, put a mark. If you have a piece of wood or something, you could draw the line. And then you keep that there. And then over here, you want the board to hit the edge of here. So you're gonna mark the edge on each side where the wood would hit. And then you're gonna draw a straight line across and it should fit right in with no math. Now that we've cut it with no math involved, to show you how easy it is, let's see if it fits. Put it in that corner, this one, perfect match. Um, we think it's kind of cool too, with uh, these marks on it, it's gonna look a little more rustic, a little older. These 
messed up parts. It's gonna look nice and rustic. And of course, now we're just gonna, we put a lot of glue under it and don't be scared, put as much as you need to because this is gonna hold all the boards together from kind of moving around, from shifting and everything like that. So glue and screw. So here's the completed version of the barn style door. You will complete the same exact process for the back side and then add in all your hardware. So here's the hardware that I bought for my door. It is all Everbuilt brand. I'm gonna have this lock here. I think it's kind of cool looking. It'll look kind of rustic. And then with, along with these handles and the hinges. So now what we're gonna do is take this belt sander and we're gonna kinda smooth out the edges, make it all match, give it a little rustic feel, beat it up, do whatever we feel like it needs. So yeah, that just makes it a little bit better. And then we'll knock off this type of stuff. So while the guys are building, we got some beans cooking in the crock pot and we're gonna grill up some steaks for our New Year's dinner. So we finally got the door hung. We got it finished, it's all up. The only thing it needs now is stain and clear coat and this baby's good to go. So I'm finishing off the door with a little bit of dark walnut stain. Can't wait to see how it turns out. And there you have it. For $50, you can have yourself a farm style door DIY project. Now after a long day's work, it's time to barbecue.